So hello everybody. My name is John Storm and I'm the director of the executive MBA programs at the University of Aberdeen Business School. Today I am delighted to welcome so many of you to our next In Conversation With event. This event is where on the first Wednesday of every month the Business School will host conversations with business leaders on topics from sustainability, entrepreneurship, energy transition and various other uh, trending topics these days. We are exceedingly excited to be virtually joined by so many alumni, students, business leaders and colleagues. May I remind you that this event today is being recorded. We would like to encourage you to join our conversation, so please feel free to ask questions using the question and answer box which you see on your teams. Without any further ado, I would like to introduce you to Graham McWilliam to discuss the topic for today, which is the Royal Seal of Approval. So Graham, welcome. Can I ask you to please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you? Yeah, indeed. Thank you very much, John. Delighted to be here this morning. Uh, a lovely sunny morning. Um, so yeah, what can I say about myself? Um, a corporate banker. And uh, you would think, how on earth does a corporate banker get involved in uh, mattresses and the, the market? I'll come on to that. Um, I did a number of things. I was in corporate banking for initially ooh, longer than I care to remember. Um, I miss a lot of the people, not so much the industry, I guess, because it's changed significantly. But my role um, going back to banking in the early days, I was involved in the audit of the, the bank's uh, lending book. It was back in the days when the bank managers had uh, a level of authority and local lending approval. Um, so my role was to check that the bank wasn't overexposed in certain areas. And that sparked, I think, my initial interest in business. Um, I worked with a local investor thereafter in Aberdeen and looked after one or two of his business interests. Uh, and that really just uh, continued to, um, you know, just enhance my interest in business in general. Um, I had another spell in corporate finance before starting Glencraft, or starting with Glencraft rather, but I, I also had a, a startup situation where I started an HR company back in 2002-2003, so uh, quite varied. Um, I met my chairman, or my late chairman, Duncan Skinner, on, uh, uh, in early 2015 and he asked me to come into Glencraft. It was really to um, to give it a bit of commerciality, really. I started on the 1st of April 2015. Now, the 1st of April is never really a good date to start anything, um, but there I was, 1st of April 2015. Um, Glencraft, so what do we do? We make uh, a range of quality luxury mattresses, also a range of classic mattresses. Uh, our social impact is to provide what we call dignity through work to our disadvantaged staff. Um, it was formed in 1843, so not quite uh, as old as the University of Aberdeen, but uh, we've been around a long time. It's a yeah. good age, definitely. <laughs> indeed, indeed, yeah. yeah. So um, you you mentioned this move from banking and also that there is a social impact uh, in, in Glencraft. And tell us a little bit more about that transition and again why you meant you mentioned that you were invited to join but can you expand upon that a little bit more yeah sure it was just a chance conversation i had um uh, much to my uh, wife's disgust i had resigned from corporate banking and was sitting at home for a period and uh, waiting for the next challenge to appear whatever that may be um, and I had a conversation with one of the board members at Glencraft. They, they gave me a call and asked me to come and meet Duncan. Um, Duncan uh, had a real impact and, uh, and a real interest in social enterprise, going back to his time with Bob Keeler when they rescued the company in 2010 and got it back on its feet again uh, through introductions to their oil and gas market. Um, and the challenge really was to make it a commercial body and try and get it away from this uh, not never to lose the the uh, social side of it, the social enterprise angle, but yeah. to make it uh, commercially viable and to move that forward. So rather than fundraise, um, so I did away with the collection tins. We had horrible purple collection tins at reception. Now, it, 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 so I don't mean to sound ungrateful, but £8.43 in a collection can was not going to make a huge difference to the future of Glencraft. Yeah. 
And I didn't want people to buy from us because of what I referred to as the sympathy sale. Mm. I wanted them to buy our product because it was the best available. And if that happened to be made by a social enterprise in Aberdeen, then so be it. Yeah, I, I, and I, I like that. And you just mentioned sympathy seal. So that leads on to the ne next question, because I gather that Glencraft maintains a, a, a lasting connection with the royal family. Can you tell us more about that and the seal that you have with them? Yeah, it, 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 <laughs> I found out almost by accident. I was having a, a, a number of brainstorming sessions with the senior team in my early days. Um, and it came out in conversation, oh, by the way, we've got this uh, Royal Warden. I said, excuse me, what? Uh, and it, they, they dug out the, the frame with a certificate in it. And I thought, wow, this is something really, uh, really useful. You know, why didn't I know about this in my first week? Um, and it was hidden away in the website even. We couldn't even find it there. So, uh, yeah, it, it's um, we're fortunate enough. We've served four generations of the, the Royal Family joint. Um, we meet Sheena, the head housekeeper at Balmoral, on a regular basis. She's a wonderful character and keeps us up to date with all things. And we've got a great relationship with the resident factor at the estate as well. Um, it's not just a case of dealing with them commercially. You have to meet a certain criteria now in terms of standard, uh, as you might expect. It's clear that Prince Charles has more say in this now because the the um, the royal warrant is more about um, uh, economies and uh, you know green issues now we're coming through you know so using less fuel in your vehicles um, how efficient is your factory that type of thing so all of this impacts we're lucky enough that we've provided mattresses to uh, uh, Windsor Castle and we recently helped Prince Charles with a project at Castle of May so um, yeah the, the Queen actually listed a Glencraft mattress in amongst her 12 favourite products oh wow so, so yeah Wow, was that a recent uh, thing there? Um, it was a, a couple of years ago, but uh, I'm hanging on to that. It's uh, yeah. all good. All good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so, you know, you, you mentioned there that with Prince Charles coming on, that there is kind of a, a change, so to speak, in terms of uh, how, how they look at their, their products and, and their suppliers. And I, I hear as well that Glencraft has had to reinvent itself quite a few times over the years. You hinted upon that in your introduction there as well. So may you tell us of um, some of these more recent changes and the role that perhaps the Royal Warrant has had in your brand, the repositioning specifically? Yeah, absolutely. There was a bit of luck involved with all of that, John, I guess. I'll come to that shortly in this. Um, there's a wee bit of an explanation there that when I got there in 2015, we were overexposed in the oil and gas market. Historically, Glencraft, uh, it was run by the local council for many years, uh, and I don't say that in a disparaging way, but there was a, a, there was a, an attitude, let's say, among some of the staff, um, and it was propped up by uh, local authority funding. Now, it, unfortunately, the business closed for six months in 2010 when that funding was removed. Mm. Um, so there was a nervousness around some of the team, etc., about what and who's this guy coming in and what have you done and blah, blah, blah. Um, but about 70% of our turnover was in oil and gas. Now, if you go back to mid-2015, yes. the oil price uh, had slumped to something like $20, 20 plus dollars. And yeah. that meant that a big chunk of our customer base, uh, indeed the platforms in the North Sea, they just weren't spending money with us. So no sooner had I arrived than I was watching cash hemorrhage out of the, bill, out of the, the, the business. Mm. Um, and I was thinking about all the things my wife would give me advice before I joined. About, Goodness me, do you know that company's been on the go since 1843? Please yeah. don't mess it up, all that kind of good stuff. All yeah. of that was going through my mind and the promise I'd given to Duncan about making it commercially viable. Um, so we ended up eventually putting the business on a three day week. So you can imagine the attitude uh, and the response from some of the staff. So yeah. this guy comes in and shortly after I put it in a 3D week because we, we really had to control costs. Um, there's a bit of a story here, so apologies for the ramble. We, the business changed, or the, the business market changed with regard to mattresses around about that time. There was a proliferation of new entrants into the mattress market. Incidentally, it's worth about three billion pounds annually if you add on uh, bedding, etc. So it's a huge, huge market. And because of that, we saw uh, these mattresses appearing in a box, you know, so 
busy people like yourself, John, you'll uh, you'll buy one online and uh, within a week or so you'll have this vacuum packed mattress appear at your front door. Uh, that was the, the brainwave of people like Simba, Eve, Emma. You still see them advertised yet and they've done remarkably well. Um, we were approached by an online furniture company in London that wanted to get into that market. And they asked us because of our royal warrant and because we were with the National Bed Federation, would you make a mattress for us uh, and would you sell them to us? I said, yeah, goodness. So this guy came up from London to meet me and we're sitting in the boardroom um, in 2015, mid 2015. And he said, yeah, listen, bear in mind that our production had fallen away drastically. You know, we're doing a fraction of the mattresses we used to do uh, right. and all my watch early doors. Um, he wanted, he said to me, I need 500 of your best mattress. And I thought, oh, wow, great. And as I was writing that down, he said, yeah, 500 a month for two years. So goodness me. So suddenly we went from a potential order of nothing to 12,000 mattresses at top end. Now yeah. our top end at that time was a memory foam uh, mattress that we sold for something like 700 pounds. Um, so to try and foster that relationship further, I, I went down to London. They were a very go ahead company. Um, I should say I was only one in a shirt and tie. I uh, ventured into their building. Their CEO was a uh, um, uh, met me with shorts and flip flops on. There was dogs going around. There was guys eating pizza. Uh, the music was blaring in the background. I think she was, but a very young, innovative company funded by five million pounds of seed capital. So they were they were decent. And uh, during that conversation, they asked, "Would we make a mattress specifically for them?" And of course. Being uh, slightly innovative, I thought, yeah, of course we'll do that. Now, all the way back to to uh, Aberdeen, I'm thinking, goodness me, I've never made a mattress in my life. Um, what am I going to do here? So uh, we got our heads together and uh, with some clever guys that we still work with in, in Edinburgh, we uh, fashioned uh, a luxury mattress made out of natural materials. Now, we didn't just punch it, <laughs> so to speak. We um, we met with the supplier of that natural materials. We could see that way forward and uh, use them as our technical advisors. So mm -hmm. they were really, really helpful in piecing that together. Long, long story short, we made up this wonderful luxury mattress, the first of our kind. We called it the Merida after the princess and brave because it was Scottish and bullshy and different. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> and we, we sent it to the CEO who was literally going to sleep on it for two weeks. Um, we sent them an alarm clock and uh, you know, she came back and said, why have you sent me this? I said, well, if you're, if you're sleeping in our mattresses, you'll need this. Um, we actually made up a comic book, which sounds ridiculous now, but we made up a comic book about the English invading Scotland and stealing all the mattresses. <laughs> it was just something to make it a bit different. Um, and it was different. They loved it, but, and there's a big but here, mm. they didn't go with us, so we didn't get that order for 12,000 mattresses. Okay. Why not? Because they didn't see the future of a product that was made by somebody that was blind or disabled. Wow. Yeah, so they missed the point totally. And that was the whole point. You know, the fact that we make handcrafted, hand finished uh, mattresses here in Aberdeen, that yeah. was a selling point, but they saw it as a risk. Wow. Yeah. So with that in mind, I got board approval to um, uh, to go with it and we put it on our showroom. Uh, and that mattress today is, is our best seller. Um, the risk we took, the, the controlled risk was was raising the price and all related to the fact it's hand finished with the Royal Seal of Approval, if you like. Yeah. Uh, when everybody was cutting prices, you know, with all those new entrants into the market, we did the opposite. We popped ahead of a bad bit and went up the way. Yes. So, and there's a market there, as we've as we've shown. So, uh, yeah. but that's what I meant about the bit of luck. You know, it was um, had we not been declined by that company in London, I'm not sure where we'd be, but yeah. it was the impetus we needed to do it for ourselves. So. Yeah, but no, it's, and, it's, and it's quite amazing, especially the reason for for them rejecting in the end. But then yeah. so that same product you're saying is actually now your best seller. Absolutely. So I, I have a wee chuckle to myself every now and again when I <laughs> check their website. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that, that's great. And and you mentioned as well that um, w within this product, there there's various aspects of it. You've got the natural part. You've you've got there is the social impact element, and then you, you are playing now on the the war warrant a little bit. Um, but at the same time, 
Glencrath has had uh, many endorsements over the years, um, besides the the royal uh, the royal family. Um, do you have any particular favourites? Um, yeah, you're right, John. We're lucky to have uh, had a few endorsements for sure. Um, we were mentioned last year, I think, or possibly the year before, in a an American crime novel. Um, it's called The Chase by uh, Janet Ivanovich and Lee Goldberg. And if I can just bear with me, I'll just read the part. And it's it's definitely us. Um, yeah. The mattress the mattress was brand new, handcrafted in Aberdeen by blind artisans using the same techniques and highly developed sense of touch as their sightless ancestors who began the company in the mid 1800s. The British royal family slept on mattresses just like it at Balmoral Castle. It was an expensive, sumptuous mattress meant for kings. What can I say? What can I say? Um, definitely us. We should ask them for royalties on that, on their book sales. Um, I'm sure it helped. Uh, we uh, we appeared in Vogue magazine a couple of years back, which I'm fiercely proud of. Not bad for a wee charity in North East Scotland. Yeah. And uh, we also featured in the Channel 5 documentary recently. One of our key customers, Rocco Forty Luxury, mentioned us as part of their uh, filming at the Balmoral. And um, this is Olga Felici, the uh, and the design director there, and the sister of Sir Rocco Forty himself. So, um, yeah. Nice. yeah. And, and, and you just mentioned earlier on today that the Queen herself mentions Glencraft being within the top 12 of her favourite. Is it favourite? What did you say again? Her favourite products, her favourite 12 products. products that she uses. Yeah. Yeah, love it. yeah excellent. So, um, brilliant. And, and w you know, there are various endorsements there. Is there any way of quantifying or, or, or or just reflecting on how they impact your business? Yeah, it's definitely got a huge impact. I'll come on to you just before we finish, but we, we, we're now doing work in Asia there, which is great and a direct result of us having the Royal work uh, for sure. Oh. The, the, the Asians love the, um, the the Royal side of it, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. So you said you'll come back to that in a moment. I'll come so. to that, okay, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so uh, kind of, Changing things a little bit, so the, the Glencraft um, was awarded the, the prestigious Queen's Award for Enterprise this year um, for promoting opportunity. So how do you come to encourage your team to, to share a, a collective vision here? Um, we really try and involve them in what we're doing, John. They, um, not just the exec team, but we had a recent uh, um, a bit of grant funding which allowed us to buy machinery and new machinery. Um, so would that involved some of our longer serving staff and their views and what we needed and where it should be cited in the factory even. Um, and we remind them daily to puff their chest out and take some pride in what they produce um, and really to have the same belief in the way forward that the exec team have. I mentioned earlier on about the, the, the impact and it's all related into that. We we make now a world class product and I genuinely mean that, a world class product. Um, the, the endorsements that we mentioned in the Royal Warrant has brought some real credibility, including I mentioned earlier the opportunity to expand overseas. Uh, so we now have a Glencraft branded store in Hong Kong, as well as a mall presence in Singapore and most recently a store in Seoul in South Korea. Um, Seoul's a, a city with 11 million people. The Asians love the Royal Connection and they're planning two more stores. The best bit in that story is that, that all of that's funded by our client. So we're yep. spreading the Glencraft brand and spreading the product um, at the cost of our client, which is great. So that's what we try and do, um, you know, promoting opportunity. Make the, we don't make the matter. I've never made a mattress in my life. It's the people on the factory floor that do it. And yeah. I want them to take the credit for that and be proud and puff their chest out, as I said earlier. Yeah, no, definitely. And and like we were saying, we, we each have our, our role, so to speak. And and it's it's fair to say, if you don't mind me putting it this way, that you know you're you're very much a leader within the company. And sometimes, you know, being a leader as you are, you get recognized for for this through, through different channels. So recently, I mean, you were awarded the, the Regional Director of the Year in 2019 and 20 uh, for both Aberdeen and the Grampian region. Um, you've been recognised by the Institute of Directors and, and various other uh, platforms. So it, just pausing for a moment and stepping back slightly and just thinking for, for other people who are maybe 
somewhat more in the middle of their career. What sort of ad advice would you share or offer from your experiences? Yeah, it's a good question, John. Um, first of all, it's a team effort. You know, that um, I'm just happened to be the guy that looks after the company meantime. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess I would sum it up. Don't be afraid to take uh, some measured risks. You know, we I, I mentioned the element of luck we had, but it came about because of that risk in terms of, well, yeah, let's make this mattress. We can do that. Let's try it and see how we get on. Um, if you don't try and change something, change just won't happen. Um, I always think the one of the worst phrases you can hear in business is we've always done it that way. Yeah. Um, and, and bless them, I heard that quite a few times in my early uh, early stages at Glencast. Um, try and innovate as well. Innovation is a great way of getting uh, some excitement going within the business. And what's the worst that can happen? If it doesn't work, you've lost a bit of cost perhaps, and you can revert back to what you had before. But unless you try, you'll never really know. So don't be afraid to put your toe in the water, I guess, and just try something a bit different. Yeah, yeah. Uh. Thank you. So in in terms of your now, this is approaching six years, isn't it, within Glen Crafts? And blessed, yeah. yeah, so so thinking of, of, of this time, if you could go back, would there be anything that you would adjust, change, do di slightly differently since joining? Um, I probably wouldn't have wanted to go through the um, the pain of the three day week and and uh, you know telling people that we're cutting the wages from five days to three days is was pretty hard. Um, yeah. But it was a lesson learned that we were overexposed in one sector that we we don't have that now. We have quite a a, a very good spread of uh, across different sectors. So um, stepping back from the business, I mean the pandemic's helped as well in terms of uh, there's a difference between working on the business and working in the business. Yeah. Uh, and having time to stand back, as we had in 2015, to think about the direction we were going in. I keep coming back to that bit of luck, you need a bit of luck, and I didn't think it at the time, but getting declined by the company in London was the best bit of business that happened to us. Right. Um, I would have loved to have worked longer with uh, Duncan Skinner. I mentioned him earlier, our late chairman. He, um, he was a wonderful man and always talked about doing the right thing and doing it right. Yes. And I, I think about that every day. Um, do the right thing and do it right. Uh, he was taking too early from us, although we've got a very able chair helping Glencraft promote the legacy that Duncan left. Um, but back to my earlier point, John, I guess you can never innovate too early and try a bit of change. Um, it's a wise man that has his afterthoughts first. Yeah, I, guess. I like that. It's a wise man who has his afterthoughts first. Yeah. 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 Excellent. No, it's, it's 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 good. Thank you for thank you for sharing. Um, in in terms of mattresses, you mentioned COVID, and and one of the things these yeah. days, a lot of a lot of people are obviously spending more time at home, um, and maybe making some of those, or or, or more consciously looking at their their life patterns and behaviours. So sleep, we we know sleep is is very important, and when we think about you know, mattress or or pillows or or, or bedding in general. Um, is there anything which just is your industry which you think could be useful for for us as viewers to be aware of? Yeah, it's a very very good way of me introducing our uh, our website, John. Um, <laughs> if you go in there, there there's uh, a, a number of blogs and hints and tips on there about how to get a good night's sleep, etc. So all of that's in there. Um, we're one of the first uh, social enterprises to embrace digital marketing. We did this back in 2015 and sent videos out. So <clears throat> when people are buying online from us and they might inquire about horse care, why would we use horse care in a mattress? Yeah. Incidentally, when we did a factory tour recently, we used to do these um, before COVID and all this nonsense. Um, any questions? Yes, one individual asked how many horses we shoot every week. <laughs> um, we no horses were harmed in the making of a Glencraft mattress. We buy, we buy in the horse tail. It's it's the best uh, available. Um, but yeah, it's uh, there's lots of good uh, uh, hints and tips on there. I think just the usual thing about staying off. The worst thing now is social media, and we're all staring at our phone before we go to sleep, and that messes with the mind, I guess, and you start thinking about right. it. So um, it helps enormously if you're sleeping on a Glencraft mattress, of course. 
Um, uh, one of the innovative things we do, uh, we, we suggest that to maximise the mattress in your sleep pattern, you rotate it and turn it uh, on a regular basis, perhaps quarterly. Uh, so we'll send a text or an email uh, to our clients or luxury clients to do that. So um, it's a service you won't get from John Lewis or Max and Spencer. It's interesting. So, so share a little bit more ro rotating the the mattress. Um, it, 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 is that for just I don't know. Yeah, it, it just spring again, or it just allows the um, the materials to settle. Um, you know, they will get uh, compressed slightly. Um, mm -hmm. It helps if you've got a double sided mattress. Of course, all Glencraft mattresses are double sided, so other mattresses are available, of course, but some of them are only padded on one side, so therefore you can't flip it. It's why we guarantee our product for 10 years. And, and you mentioned that you would have a service, a team match to go in and help people to do that. We don't physically go in and uh, flip it with them, but what we do is sort of send them a reminder that, listen, uh -huh. um, get a family member to help you. And, Flip your mattress, so it's time to do that. So yeah, yeah, it's it's a good innovation for John. We might start that now. <laughs> no, great. Um, so so thank you. And and actually, just before we were kicking live today, you you held up a glass of water, and you, there was something interesting you shared about this. Not this glass of water specifically, but um, may may you share with our audience today what what's special about. Yeah, it's, it's why why we use horse hair and natural fibres. Natural fibres are open celled and hollow and wick the moisture away that we all lose during the night. Unfortunately, you, you lose about this much perspiration, a glass uh, of perspiration each night. Then the mattress, when it's compressed, the perspiration disappears through the 16 vents that we have. So it's uh, there's much more science to it than you might think. Uh, yeah. We'll have everybody away checking the mattress tonight now, I'm sure, John. So. <laughs> Well, in, in some ways, we hope that they would be. I know that me and Lucia were um, discussing this earlier, so um, I've got a couple of questions here, just conscious of time as well. So um, the first one for you, uh, Graham, is the bedding industry has been very innovative in its packaging and delivery offers in the last 10 years. Yeah. What changes are you expecting in the upcoming 10 years and how will Glencraft adapt? So uh, I get a very good question. We uh, we use a lot of plastic just now, which is not great. And the uh, Prince Charles will give me a hard time about that in my next uh, Royal Warrant application. Um, so we're seeking to use natural materials. We can use things like coconut fiber um, to, to make bags to put mattresses in to transport them. So that's something we're looking at actively or will do in, in, as we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no, you, you hinted on that earlier on today, right? Yeah. And um, perhaps the final question for today, um, I'm not sure how specific this one will be for Glencraft, but um, John Lewis and, and, and other department stores as well have recently been in closing. Um, do you think that you should do more for marketing to the local market to mop up this kind of business? We are certainly trying that. 20% of what we do is retail. Um, so the, the bulk of our business is uh, business to business, if you like, in terms of bulk mm -hmm. um, and, and volume. But yes, we're doing appointments now for our showroom and inviting people in. So by all means, please come and see us. We'd be delighted to show you around. And uh, uh, the only way to buy a mattress properly is to lie on it and try it. Yeah, you know, uh, it's the only way to be. So we're a, we're a well kept secret and have been for 170 odd years. We I, I aim to change that, which is why we do a lot of social media, etc. So. Um, yeah. But just up in White Mouse Avenue, please come and see us. We'd be delighted. Right, great. Well, thank you. Um, unfortunately, just conscious of the time today, we're going to have to bring this event to a close. So I would like to say thank you, Graham, for, for sharing your story and, and very obvious passion that you have for Glencraft. Um, thank you for, for those who have joined us today. Uh, I hope to see everyone at our next event in the series. Um, which is with Amika Emimbola. That's from BP. And the topic of that conversation is what next for the North Sea? And that will be on Wednesday, the 8th of September, which is actually the second Wednesday of that month, not the first. I'm just giving everyone a little bit of advance notice about there is a date change for that one. Thank you all very much again for joining us today. And I look forward again to seeing you next week. Oh, sorry, next month. <laughs> Cheerio. Yeah.